Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Short Term Show. Today we have a really cool guest. You've probably seen him on Instagram or everywhere. I know I have. We have Brian Lubin of Action Academy. Brian, how's it going? It's going good, Avery. I'm so excited. I'm coming on your show today and you're going to come on mine uh, tomorrow. So we're going to do a great two for one special. This is my first podcast episode, believe it or not, in over two months. We started our show in 2021 and it's a daily show. You're a oh, podcaster, wow. so you know how crazy that is. So I've done a podcast every day for almost three years. And for the first time, I was able to go travel in Europe, which we can get into in this podcast, truly take a vacation for the first time. And now this is my first podcast back. So, you know, just that story in and of itself is going to be cool for the audience. But uh, I'm honored for this one to be the first back. Oh, well, thank you so much. We're honored to have you. And you are right up the road from us. But we're your vacation market here in 30A. You're in Atlanta, right? I was in Atlanta. I'm in Austin, Texas now. That's where home is. Uh, okay, okay. But most of my I life did. was in Atlanta. Gotcha. All right. I did my time in Austin. I went to UT. So Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I do miss it sometimes. But then I go back and I'm like, oh, man, y'all kind of ruined it. But, you know, that was 10 years ago that I lived there. So <laughs> anyway, let's talk about you. We're here to talk about you, Brian. So for our listeners who may not be familiar, you want to just give us a little bit of background on yourself, what you do. Um, how you got out of your corporate job, all that fun, fun stuff. Sweet. Yeah, guys, buckle up for the next 45 minutes. We'll talk about my childhood trauma and go through high school <laughs> and college. No, uh, I've got it down to about two minutes, guys, and we're going to provide as much value as humanly possible to every single one of you guys. So five star review for the short term show with Avery Crawl, of <laughs> course. So I did the pretty traditional thing. So I started corporate America and I was just like, OK, um, I heard about the salary thing, but then I realized if I'm better, I don't get paid more. And that's a trap a lot of people fall into is their salary only. And so I realized that I wanted to be uh, this thing called commission. So I went into sales. I was one of the few people that actually chose to go into sales because I wanted to have that uh, variable compensation. If I get better, I want to get paid more. So I did that. I made it to number eight out of 5,079 in that company. I was the top of the company out of the entire country. I still, to this day, keep my uh, my trophies and my stuff because it was the first time I did something really, really hard in my life that took multiple years. And so a lot of people that are listening to this podcast are in this zone of good enough. They're in this comfort zone to where they're like, I'll invest in real estate a little bit on the side. I'll do maybe a house every few years. I don't need to take that much action because your life is good enough. Your marriage is good enough. Your health is good enough. Everything is good enough. And this is a trap that we all fall into. So a frame that I like to give people out the gate so you guys get value right out the beginning of the podcast is look at your boss's boss. If today is good enough, look at what that is and what who that person is, that man or that woman, because that's going to be you in five to 10 years if you kept completely kicked tail. And I looked at my boss's boss, my VP of sales, and that guy was um, balding, overweight, eating donuts and caffeine every single day, not seeing his three young daughters grow up, not a dig on him as a man, not a dig on him as a father. It's a dig on corporate America and the type of life that we're living. And so I realized that's not who I wanted to become. And I, I could future cast what my life was going to be if I kept doing and succeeding where I was. And so I said, ooh, I don't want to be him. I want to do something different. And so I started asking the questions. I was making $250,000 a year in my corporate job. I said, how do I make $500,000 a year in this job? I can't. Okay, what about a million dollars a year in this job? I can't. I said, okay, cool. Well, I need to go figure out how to do my own thing. So long story short, which we can get into, I started investing in uh, single family real estate out the gate. In the very beginning, I would buy a house a year uh, just because that is all I knew. I didn't know anything mm -hmm. about raising private capital, about uh, commercial real estate, about buying businesses, anything or short-term rentals at all. All I knew is this house hack strategy. So I did that once a year, built up about $4,000 a month of passive cash flow, started up my podcast, Action Academy podcast in 2021, because I realized I was going too slowly. I was like, I want to get out of this freaking quarter million dollar a year job. I don't need $200 a month. I need $20,000 a month. <laughs> How the hell do I pull this off? I don't hear this on the, I don't hear this on the podcast. I don't hear this in the books. Like I need a big amount of income. I was like, so how do I do this differently? And I figured the best way to do that would be to interview millionaires and ask them how the heck they did it. So I started up the show. Um, that turned into a business of itself. 
between the show and my cash flow in real estate, I replaced twenty thousand dollars a month. And by March of 2022, I left that six-figure corporate sales job to travel full-time around the world for eight months. I started in Greece, went all around Europe. Since that point, every summer, I go travel to Europe, which is what we just talked about. I just finished up my two months. And uh, now I travel about 50% of every single year while running my uh, full-time business, which is Action Academy. And uh, now we sold all the single-family houses, and we're about to put all of that money into buying big old uh, boutique hotels. So that's where we're at today. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of things. That's a whole lot of that's things. That's the entire to story. Into. Let's have a podcast episode, baby. <laughs> Short Term Shop Plus has live and recorded sessions on the following topics. Creating a compelling listing. Marketing your STR property. Setting up a new listing. Managing from a distance. Finding and acquiring your first or next STR. Live revenue management audits with the pros. Analyzing an STR for gross revenue. All of this and much, much more is now available at your fingertips with Short Term Shop Plus. Everything you need to know to have success in the world of vacation homes and STR. Please join us at stsconsultation.com. That's stsplus.com or stsconsultation.com to learn more. Awesome. Yeah, I I love Europe. We actually just booked our first trip to take our kids who are three and five to Europe. Uh, we're starting with Disney World Paris, of course. Of course. So, of course. Uh, yeah, you got to make it fun for them. So, but then I'm going to plan some other things. That's as far as we made it. Like, literally just booked it yesterday. My husband's going to run the Paris Marathon. And then I get to book the rest. <laughs> that's that's so cool. America is yeah. the best place to make money. Europe's the best place to spend it. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. It is It is fun. Um, all right. Well, okay. So, so many questions. So let's start with, I think a lot of people who are listening to this podcast have that you are in that place where you are like, uh, I don't really like this job. I don't really, this is not the life that I want. I mean, I know I talk about that on this show all the time. I was in the same exact place and I got passed over for the only promotion that was probably going to come around for the next five or six years. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. we got to do something. So I think a lot of people are at that. Okay. We have to do something place. And so what, what advice would you have for them? Like maybe they just need to be kind of that kick out of the tree a little bit. So at what point do you say, I think, cause a lot, I think a lot of people sit at that. Okay. What do I do now place for years? So mm -hmm. what's your advice to kind of get them over the edge a little bit and just to jump in and, and start doing something, whether it's single family, whether it's short-term rentals, you know, whether it's buying stocks. I mean, I don't know anything about that, but whatever that thing is. Yeah. So the people that are the multimillionaires aren't smarter or better than anybody listening to this podcast. They just have what's called the action muscle to where they go from idea to implementation like that. They don't have to think about it. So an example of this is like if you jump into a pool, like if you're out laying in the sun and you see the pool and you dip your toe into the water and you're like, oh, that's cold. I'm, I'm not going to do that. You go like really quickly. Uh, you go really slowly. Like you're not going to jump into the water. But then if you just jump, and then you just, you're sitting in the water afterwards, you have that initial shock, but then you realize, oh, this is fine. Mm -hmm. So the reason that most people aren't doing anything is they've got that 75 degrees of comfort like we talked about. So there's two different ways to do it. Um, so way number one is what I call pond hopping. So when you become really good at whatever you're doing, like normally if you start making some money, you're making six figures, you're around people that are, you know, you're some of the people that you you're surround yourself with. And a lot of the times you rise to the top of that friend group. And then that's where you get uh, very dangerous levels of mediocrity because you're already the top. So you need, a, you need to be able to transition to bigger ponds and you need to jump to bigger ponds. So I call it pond hopping. So if you just surround yourself with people that are financially free, investing in real estate, investing in short-term rentals and doing the thing, and you're the only one that's not, that is the only way that I've seen tried and true to convince you to take the action that is required because you cannot substitute or go around the action. It's a brick wall that you must go through. We talk about passive income and real estate investing, but there's nothing passive about buying these properties and doing what's required. You have to go through the brick wall. 
So that's the biggest thing I say is immersion yields conversion. If you want to be a millionaire, the fastest, most tried and true method to become a multimillionaire is to be around other multimillionaires. And that's what I did. And then that's what made me start thinking about things differently and being like, oh, I can't just buy a house a year. I have to do something different. I have to start my own business. I have to go about this a different way. Yeah, and I absolutely agree with that. And I love the phrase dangerous levels of mediocrity because I think mm -hmm. when people stop asking questions about well, what happens if I do this? Well, how far can I go with this? And they just like don't know that anything better is out there, then they just sit there and that I, I'm going to use that phrase. I'm ripping that off from you. Yeah, they're not afraid <laughs> of and the reason that people aren't doing things is they're not they're not actually afraid of failing. They're not afraid of failure. And guys, like Right now, I'm kind of up in the stratosphere. I'm giving you guys coaching because like we do this for a living now. This is we help people with real estate investing and buying small businesses. And we've just seen this to be true over and over again. Most of the time, it's not a tactical thing. If you listen to every single one of Avery's episodes, you guys know how to buy a short term rental by this point. I'm telling you, like it's been <laughs> done before millions of yes. times. You guys know how to do it. But for some reason, you're still not doing it. And the reason isn't because you're afraid of failure. It's because you're afraid of the appearance of failure. That's why. Mm. So you, if you go to the gym and you're deadlifting and you're picking up the weight and you fail, it's too heavy and nobody's around, you don't care. But if you're in a gym and it's a crowded gym and you're trying to deadlift and you pick up the weight and you fail and everyone sees you, that's what you're afraid of. So you're afraid of losing at this real estate investing thing, coming crawling with your tail tucked between your legs back to your job. That's what you're most afraid of. And so what I tell people is, you know, your worst case scenario is your present day reality. Because that's what you're afraid of. You're afraid of, you know, the tenant being evicted, the, the deal being bad, and now you're coming back to work a job, which you're already going to right now, or you're coming back from. So it's like, once you realize you're already living in your personal hell, <laughs> <laughs> then, like, this is what we do. This is where the money is at. It's convincing people to get up off the freaking couch and yeah. analyze some flipping <laughs> properties. Like, that's it. Yes. That will do it. That's what helped me a lot. Like, imagine I was saving like 60%, 70% of my income. I was making a quarter million a year at like 24, 25 years old. Like, that's way more money than I needed. And so it was very difficult for me to make that shift. And so when I was finally able to make that shift and I saw these people that I was like, Oh, you make a million dollars a month passively. Got it. Um, <laughs> I'm not as big of a deal as I thought I was. And then for the rest of your life, that's a game that you continue to play. Yeah. Well, that's all all very powerful. So let's talk about how how we implement that. And it looks different for yes. everyone. So like for me, it was short term rentals. For other people, Correct. it can be other things. And I mean, we've got other types of a lot of other types of real estate too. And but for me, like the kind of the springboard was the short term rentals. So what was the springboard for you? So you did some house hacks, but what was the thing that actually let you be able to put in your two weeks notice? Yeah. So I tell everybody to start with uh, to land this plane or bring it back down to earth. Right. Um, you start with three different numbers. So you have survive, you have arrive and you have thrive. These are three levels of cash flow. We talk about cash flow a lot. But nobody really dives deep into actually how to tangibly come up with your numbers. Because what does everyone say, Avery? $10,000 a month in passive income. I can quit my job and travel around the world. Everyone has the same number. So that means that nobody's actually putting the time to come up with what number works for them personally. So Survive, Arrive, and Thrive is what I came up with as my business plan. And it's worked since. And uh, the reason that the numbers exist is most of the time you need less cash flow than you think that you need to be able to actually start taking swings at the plate and taking big risks. Survive is your fixed expenses. So what do you need coming in from real estate passively to where you can cover your mortgage, your bills, your food, your kids have clothes on their bodies, hopefully, um, for as long as you can keep them on. <laughs> and so it's like you guys are surviving. That is your survive number. Arrive is now you have a bit of discretionary spending. So now you guys can go out to eat, maybe have a little bit of fun on the weekends. It's more of a normal existence. And then thrive is where you completely are replacing your income on 100% from your salary and from your day job. A lot of people are aiming for that thrive in the very beginning. And it's it could be an intimidating number. It could be very scary because some people listening to this maybe make $300,000 a year. And you're like, how the mm -hmm. heck can I do this? Right? So for me, I always say, 
knock out that survive with your quote unquote passive income. And then you can really start swinging at the plate for larger strategies to get to the other numbers. So for me, survive was $4,000 a month. I knew that if I hit $4,000 a month, even with a $20,000 uh, payment coming in every single month for me and my job, if I hit $4,000, I would be good. I was house hacking. I did the co-living strategy personally. That's just how I got started. I lived in one, one room, rented out the other bedrooms. I had five bed, four bath houses. Um, there was a period where I was going to do short-term rentals uh, with some of the rooms by the room, but I just decided with the long term it was it was good enough for me, and I was yeah. cash flowing over two grand, you know, a property even when I was living there. So I was just like, this is fine. <laughs> yeah. Once once you hit that four grand, then you're like, okay, cool. Once you get to that point, then you start investing into uh, getting into the rooms with these other people. So that's what I started doing is I was like, okay, I've got this coming in. Now I'm going to start investing in coaches and mentors and masterminds. And that's when I found out this group called Go Abundance. Um, so I joined this group called Go Abundance. It was all millionaires. And that's the, the pool that I was able to start interviewing from. I spent $5,000 to go to a weekend event with these guys. And it was the most amazing thing. I was the smallest fish in the pond. And at that point, they were talking about, okay, you should try this strategy, this strategy, this strategy. You should start your own business. And so for me personally, what I ended up doing, because I already had that $4,000 coming in, I was like, okay, I want to start up my own business. So what I did was I started podcasting and then it became uh, a revenue source for me because I would recommend different coaches, different masterminds, different mortgage lenders, stuff like that. And then people would go and pay for these services and then I would get a 10%, 15% cut. So the affiliate model, and that turned into twelve to $15,000 a month for me which I since quit um, back in 2023 when I launched my uh, formal company today. But those are the things that got me out. And now I've since sold those properties. Um, they appreciated through COVID. So now we're sitting on about four or $500,000 in cash. And we're getting that up to a million dollars in cash. And we're going to be pouring that along with a few other uh, capital partners into boutique hotels. So it all comes back down to knowing exactly what your numbers are and then how what your timeline is to get them because that influences like the different decisions that you make. Wow, that's awesome. Like so so many things still. I've got an off-market boutique hotel for you. I'll tell you offline. Oh, um, damn, Amy. Let's go. <laughs> but the thing is, you can use that same framework, the survive, arrive, and thrive, because if you use that with any asset class, then you know what you need to do. For instance, the biggest thing that we see is you'll have, and this is where short-term rentals comes into play. If you say, okay, for my survive, for my arrive, for my thrive, let's say that you're aiming for $8,000. I say, okay, cool. How fast do you want to do that? And you say within two years. I'm like, okay, cool. You can't just buy single family like you're buying single family today. You need to do something different. You need to do short term. You need to do midterm. Uh, you need to do multifamily or, or uh, commercial or buy a small business. There's different ways for you to hit that within the time frame that you do. So that's where clarity comes from is being able to have the the number that you're trying to hit in the time frame within which to hit it. And then that's how you pick your asset class. And I've, I've got a, a few lead up questions. So one that I've been wanting to ask you, meant to ask you right before this, but I didn't anyway. Um, so, and then I want to get into some of the business and cash flow stuff. So 50% of all real estate investments are sold within the first two years. Mm -hmm. How do you think, why do you think that is? And then two, how do you, what would be your advice to not be in that 50%? Like, what do you think separates the 50% who keep them and the 50% who get out within the first two years? I could answer that question in two ways because I was a person that intentionally sold mine. So first, let me answer that question and then let me go into why I sold mine. Um, so the first way is people don't underwrite correctly. So they're underwriting for like the top of the market. And we see that in short term rentals a lot, um, especially yes, like yeah. post COVID. <laughs> people were people were buying short term rentals and they were thinking, oh, OK, I'm going to buy in these areas that are new areas that aren't proven vacation destinations. And, you know, of course, the regulations are going to work for me. Of course, everything's going to work out. Of course, I'm going to be at 80 percent plus occupancy. <laughs> Air DNA said so. Right. And, yes. and so over over underwriting uh, the properties. Um, getting too excited, getting like ahead of your skis a little bit with projections. That was the first thing. Another thing is buying houses that didn't have an exit strategy. 
So a big thing that I was seeing across everyone was, okay, I'm buying a house. I'm going to short-term rental it. But this is the only way that the mortgage is covered. This is the only way this thing even has a prayer of cash flowings by doing this. If I had to, in, emer in an emergency, put this to an MTR strategy or bring this down to a long LTR strategy, <clears throat> there's no way that I'm going to be able to cover the mortgage payment. A lot of people get underwater there. So from what I'm seeing, and I think you can agree, and I'm curious about your perspective on this, I'm seeing uh, problems with the underwriting. I'm seeing problems with location and, and underappreciating the gravity that restrictions and regulations can have, like we're seeing in New York, like we're seeing in DFW, like we're seeing in California some, um, completely decimating the markets where people that maybe have just purchased there are like, oh my gosh, what, what's happening? And then the third is because they don't truly understand why they're investing in real estate in the first place. Uh -huh. They don't have a beginning. They don't have a beginning, a middle and an end. They don't have an enough number. They're just blindly investing into the void and they don't have <laughs> any, any targets or projections for what they're actually trying to accomplish within a two year or three year time frame. So all of this lack of clarity is the main culprit of people that are involuntarily selling their assets. Now, the next question is, why did I voluntarily sell my assets? Because this was something that I went through a lot of uh, internal turmoil to do. And I had to ask really smart and really rich people before pulling the trigger. Because both of my properties cash flowed, all right? Until they didn't. That's the key distinction. Mm -hmm. So... I, I had these co-living properties and they were going beautifully. They were in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, North Atlanta and Marietta and Woodstock, which are uh, markets that are growing like freaking wildfire. So the appreciation was crazy. I moved to Texas and I'm traveling around the world. And as I do that, I have to evict one of my tenants because uh, she just decides to stop paying rent. <laughs> I was like, okay, beautiful. Um, so that was a four month battle to get her out because of Georgia. And then I finally got her out. She trashed the place. I go fly back to Atlanta with my realtor, who was also like my GC. And he was like, okay, this is going to be about $15,000 to fix the damage. And I was like, well, it's no reason going after her because she already didn't pay the, the yeah. mortgage pay, the, the rent payment. So I'm not going to be able to get this. And so I was like, okay, so even with CapEx accounted for, like in us putting 20% away for reserves, this is still killing our $2,000 a month cash flow on top of that. I was like, so why are we doing this at all? And so I was looking at that repair in the face and I went to my mentors and I was just like, hey, I did everything right. And now I'm looking at this and my friend gave me some really good advice. And we talk about uh, ROI and ROE, return on equity. But more importantly, I discovered for the first time ROE, return on energy and ROE, return on effort. And so I realized that these properties for me because I was making so much in our business, in our business action academy, for me to take my attention away from the business and focus on these was taking like it was not it was a disproportionate use of my time and mental bandwidth for what it was. And so we looked at the equity and we realized that I could get a few hundred thousand dollars like in cash if I were to just sell them. And so I, my friend said, "Hey, man, if you're uh, doing this and." You're not going to be doing single family long. You want to move into commercial anyways. He's like, let's go ahead and just offload the properties. So I sold them both on to VA uh, loans, which I was really proud of. And uh, so they both got them 0% down up front. And I'm, I'm really happy for them. They'll cash flow really well for both of those veterans. So oh, I was excited okay. for that. And I got and I got to pocket like $300,000 of cash. And so that was, that was super <laughs> fun for all parties yeah. involved. This episode of The Short Term Show is brought to you by The Short Term Shop. If you're interested in buying a short-term rental in one of the top vacation markets in America, just go to theshorttermshop.com and click Get Connected with an Agent. If you purchase a home with the shop, you'll have access to all of our client-only benefits, such as training on how to manage your short-term rental. So we'll teach you everything you need to know from how to set up your Airbnb and Verbo listings to how to use the property management software that you'll need to streamline your business, all the way down to helping you source your local boots on the ground like cleaners, candy people, etc. We've taught thousands of people just like you how to buy and manage their vacation homes from anywhere in the world. So head on over to theshorttermshop.com and click get connected with an agent to get started. I do have to mention that we're brokered by EXP or else I get in trouble. We'll see you guys over there. 
This episode of The Short Term Show has been brought to you by your friendly short term shop real estate agent. We are hyper local and totally dedicated to your success. Whether you want to buy your next short term rental or sell the one you currently own, we would be honored to earn your business. We are in all of the best vacation markets in America. Find us at theshorttermshop.com. That's theshorttermshop.com. Brokered by eXp. Yeah, that's that is super fun to to pocket three hundred thousand in cash. And and I agree with that. I think I think one other thing that I would add is like people who don't want to like take control of their own destiny. Uh, the, the ones that I see, at least in my business that sell quickly, not because they want to sell for equity, but because they just don't like it or it's not working or the ones who are like, oh man, there, there's a, a leak it's in hard. this water heater. Yeah. They're like, there's a leak in this water heater. Let's sue the seller. Let's, why didn't the seller, like, why didn't the seller tell us about this? Why didn't they do whatever? Let's get an attorney. And I'm my line, or it's actually my husband's line that I have to steal is it's a lot cheaper to call a plumber than it is to call an attorney. And the people who just want to take control of their own life and call the plumber and get it fixed, which is a very small uh, example. There's much bigger, better examples. Um, but those are the people who are going to be successful. The people who mm-hmm. don't fix it, but want to blame somebody else and go get the attorneys after the sellers because they didn't tell you about this leak that they probably didn't know about anyway. Those are the ones that end up, end up selling. You have to be someone who's going to take control of your business and run it. And um, you know, another thing that, your story kind of prompted with me that we talked about before that we we were planning to talk about today is when people invest only for cash flow mm-hmm. that can change quickly and i used to 10 years ago i would be arguing with people on the bigger pockets forums like no you invest for cash flow only appreciation is dumb you don't know what's going to happen and you need to be making that money and i have had to take my medicine and learn my lesson on that because for us, so we buy short-term rentals only in vacation markets. So somebody is not going to come in and long-term rent a $2 million beach house. So mm-hmm. the way we do it is, well, we find value-add properties and rehab them. So if we need to sell them, we've got plenty of equity to do that. But with our commercial properties, so apartment buildings for long-terms, we invested strictly for cash flow. We've got one property we've owned a, almost five years. And we know the Midwest does not appreciate uh, even if you, after rehab, they're still not worth that much more, but we are like, it's okay. We're going to hold this forever. We're going to keep it cash flow. Cash flow. And we invested only for cash flow. And what happened completely outside our control, the apartment building across the street, not owned by us, that guy let it completely fall apart. It has been condemned by the city. It's full of crime and drug dealers. That's now making its way across to our apartment building. People are breaking in all these things get up uh, guests, sorry, tenants don't feel safe. They want to move out. So now we're at the point that we've had, we've already rehab these units. We're having to re rehab these units because people are breaking in and putting holes in walls and things. So the return on energy is not, like, we could hang on and, and wait the several years is going to take for that other, other place to get bought or something. And, uh, but it's just not worth doing. Like our time is so much better spent just unloading that and reinvesting that in some other type of property somewhere else that works best for us. And we're going to lose money on that because we bought only for cash flow. There's not really any room in the appreciation, plus all the time and energy and money we've spent on the rehab. So uh, sure. I have to correct my my former life self about investing only for cash flow <laughs> no and, and that that is a is a it's a wonderful lesson for people and here's the if there's a message that people understand from this podcast it's you get profit comes from problems profit comes from problems there's no way to escape hard there's no way to escape problems the bigger problem that you solve the more profit that you're going to get so if i saw somebody um, and they had, I'm sorry, the audacity to come to me and say, oh my God, this water heater is leaking. Let's sue the seller. I would tell them to go take a long walk off a short pier. I'm like, you're a real estate investor, sweetie. Like, <laughs> come on. I had my water heater. <laughs> I had three water heaters <laughs> that went out <laughs> in different ways. My basement flooded four different times in four oh different ways. Four <laughs> different ways. Which You're like, how many ways can a basement flood? I know them all. 
trees went down <laughs> on my house. Am I going to sue the forest? Like what? It's just like, this is what happens is like you are paid to solve problems. If you go into business, if you go into real estate investing, you better get used to problems. They never go away. They just look different. Once you're making $100,000 a year in passive income or a million dollars a year in passive income, you still have problems. Now the right. problem is a tenant falls and they're suing you for $3 million because they slipped on ice on one of your steps and they know that you have money. That's what the problems look like later. So it's, it's happened to different me. Problems. That exact scenario has happened to me. <laughs> well, would you, would you look at that? <laughs> um, it's, the fall was alleged and it ended up, the insurance company was like, no, like it's, it's done now, Correct. no liability, but that literal exact scenario. <laughs> but that is, yeah. That, yeah, that's the problems that you have now. Yeah, so the problems don't go away. They just look different. And the only thing that changes is your ability to deal with them. I remember the first time that I had a flood in one of my units, I was just like, oh my God, uh, this is going to be like crippling for me. How am I going to overcome this? And then I just got a freaking remediation team. I got Servpro out there. I fixed the freaking drywall. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. I didn't do any of that. Like I hired people to do it. Insurance covered it. Move on. Next time it happened, I was like, all right, cool. A little bit less stress, a little bit less angry. And then by the time we got to the eviction, I was just like, okay, cool. Like <laughs> it was quiet. I was wondering what was coming up. And so it's like, as soon as people know that, then it really just gets to a point of, um, the problems that people are afraid of facing like and the problems that people are going through right now isn't the problem itself. It's just your perception of the problem. Because me looking back at those problems that felt crippling to me four years ago, it was just like, dude, those were like a blip on the radar. And now me like scaling our current business today, Action Academy, from like 2 million to 10 million, I've got these problems where I'm like, okay, fulfillment, hiring, lead generation, all this different stuff. I'm like, dude, four years from now, I'm going to look at those and be like, Hey, <laughs> those weren't big problems. Like those yeah. were very fig figure outable. It's my favorite word. Yes. If people have done it before, like you don't need to stress about it. So just take a deep breath and just remember, I'm a real estate investor. I signed up for this. <laughs> I do. This is the business we have chosen. Correct. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about businesses for a minute. We moved on. We went from cash flow. So I I really do think that all real estate, specifically commercial, I mean, and specifically short term rentals. It's kind of the gateway drug to other types of businesses. To it mm -hmm. teaches you, it's real estate that teaches you how to run a business, and then yes. you know maybe the eventual next step is buying businesses. So, are you doing that? What's your advice there? Every don't get me excited. This is what I really <laughs> like talking about. Um, <laughs> business is my favorite thing. So, and like this is how I view the game, and and it's just, I'll I'll rephrase it a different way. So, the majority of millionaires are made from real estate. But the majority of like eight figure millionaires to billionaires are made through private equity. So it's either starting your own company and having an enterprise valuation to it or you're buying companies. So the, what I really love about short term rentals is that it's such a wonderful it's such a wonderful way to learn how to run a business disguised as real estate because you're really in the hospitality industry. Like you are managing guests, you're managing cleaners. It's the same thing as you would be doing in the hotel industry, mm -hmm. uh, which is like my passion. I'm mm -hmm. obsessed with like hotels to the point where I've got a list of the top 100 hotels in the world and I'm slowly ticking off each one of them um, <laughs> that I'm visiting because I can take their like notes and apply them to my business. So the business that we started um, and I can go into how we did it because there's a lot of people on here that I think would benefit from it. And it's my favorite thing to talk about is we started up uh, a community uh, that teaches people how to buy real estate and small businesses. So we have an entire coaching staff. Uh, it's Action Academy. And that's what we run full time today. So that currently does about $2 million a year uh, with like insane margins. And so I started that in 2023. And I didn't start that as a community. So here's what I would advise to anybody that's like getting started. And like they want to start their own side hustle, maybe an info product, something that's real estate adjacent. A lot of people want to do coaching, mentorship, whatever. Um, so what I did was I invested in the real estate and I started posting about it. And then people were like, oh, how did you leave your job? Cool. I'll coach you for free. What do you need help with? And so I did 100 free coaching calls through my podcast. And I said, uh, ask the same questions on every single one of the podcasts, uh, on one, every single one of the calls. I said, uh, what do you, what, like, what's your constraint? Where are you at today? Where are you trying to get to? And everybody said the same things. They're like, I have a few properties. There's nowhere near the cash flow that I need. Um, 
I don't have the clarity of where I'm going. I don't have the confidence to do a big deal. I don't have the community to support me along this. All my friends, like I'm the only real estate investor and I don't have the capital to pull it off. I said, okay, cool. So let me build that for you. So I created an online course, which is what I thought the answer was. Mm -hmm. And so I did an online course uh, back in 2022. And I went back to those, 50, those 100 people that I coached for free and I sent an email and the entire email was, yo, created this thing. I helped you all for free. Hope you loved it. Here's the thing I talked about. 1500 bucks, question mark. <laughs> and I made $100,000 in 48 hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that was like with seven to 8,000 Instagram followers. And that was maybe about the same in monthly downloads on the podcast. Maybe 10,000 monthly downloads or 20,000 monthly downloads. Nothing crazy on a podcast. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, let's, let's get this thing going. And then within three weeks, we already realized it was the wrong business model. So we pivoted because uh, I asked them, I said, what is the most benefit from this? Because I'd throw them all into a Facebook group together and they started doing deals together in the Facebook group, like out the, out the gate. <laughs> and I was, they were like, oh, the course is cool, but like this is really cool. And I said, oh, okay. So we pivoted to the community model. Um, and we went from a paid course with a free community to a paid community with a free course. And that became our 30-day onboard. We officially launched that uh, business in 2023. And now I've got $400,000 of payroll that I paid to my coaches and, and my mentors. And it's like the best thing that I do in my entire life. And now we've got like 350 some odd members and uh, people are buying businesses, short-term rentals, boutique hotels, businesses left and right. And that's what I do full time. And I freaking love it. <laughs> It sounds awesome. Yeah, uh, you got me want to join. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just like, it all goes through that sequential process. So I mean, if if you're in short-term rental right now, I would say to like land a plan and make this really applicable for people. It's like, don't view yourself as much as an investor. View yourself as a business owner. Because everyone that's at the eight-figure level, they have a they have a business that's in real estate. Like they have a, they're a businessman or a businesswoman that happens to invest in real estate. When you take your like investor hat off and you put your business owner hat on, that's when the magic happens. Um, and that's why I like uh, boutique hotels. So for me, hospitality is something that's really, really um, interesting to me and it lights my soul on fire. And what happened was we threw one of our uh, Action Academy events at this beautiful like $6 million boutique hotel in, in Cabo. And it was just like I was seeing people walk in. It was just the coolest thing ever to get their reactions and to create that experience for them. And so I was just like, okay, cool. Well, we have the capital. Like, let's take one of these down uh, because it's energizing, exciting, and fun for me. So at the end of the day, in the very beginning, investing whatever you have to do just to get your foot off the ground and just to get the plane to take off the runway. But once you have traction, at that point, then you can really start asking the question out of all the assets to do, which one of these seems the most fun for me? And you just go all in on that. So we're going to buy $100 million of hotels over the next couple of years. And so we've got, we've got about $20, $30 million of soft commit capital already to doing it. We're going to start off small, probably about a $5 million purchase price. And then after that, stabilize that, get proof of concept, go low and slow. Uh, don't Just because you can raise all the money doesn't mean that you should. And then after that, we're going to start really scaling. So I'll pause there as a lot. <laughs> yeah. This is what I'm really excited about. <laughs> yeah. That, that is a lot. I mean, we could do a whole other episode on that. So we've got nine minutes left. What about hotels? Like what, let's, how are you going to choose? Like what kind of markets are you going into? Because I think choosing a market for any right. type of real estate investing is more important almost than the property itself. Mm -hmm. And so what are you, what's your criteria for choosing markets and the hotels themselves? So first you have to decide like what type of atmosphere, what type of environment are you trying to create? So for us, I'm in love with coastal. Um, so I understand that there's a lot of red tape, especially around insurance. I'm doing a giant insurance call with a, a broker tonight for our group um, to where insurance, especially in Florida, can completely kill a deal. Um, yes. So in, in Louisiana as well. So <laughs> we're looking at um, going to be probably markets in California, like my friend Rich Summers. Uh, we're also looking international, possibly Mexico, possibly Belize. Uh, so we're looking at different coastal areas. 
For us, the location is the most important point because the biggest note that I've taken from all of the hotels that I've stayed in, I've probably spent about over a hundred thousand dollars staying in hotels that just for like research and enjoying the experience. You're paying for the views. Like that's what you're paying for. The location is the most important because uh, what I want to do is I want to start with that location to, because there's only a certain amount of hotels that could be in any wonderful location. And then you can build like the greatest hotel and the grandest hotel and the crappiest location. And it doesn't work like mm -hmm. other places. Like maybe you can make a rural short term rental that's just absolutely insane and it'll, it'll do numbers. But mm -hmm. that doesn't work with boutique hotels. So yeah. we'll do coastal because I like the vibe, a class yeah. location. Um, and then we'll buy a really crappy old ones and put a lot of capex and renovation into it. So that's a partner that I'm looking to acquire is somebody that's an absolute expert in reno and doing like luxury amenities. All right. You hear that, guys? He needs somebody who's good at luxury amenities. Hit me well, up. Yeah, because yeah. I have no GC experience. So I need a partner <laughs> on my team. I can capital raise till the cows come home. I can pull $10 million out of thin air. I need somebody that's got 10 to 20 years of experience in the thing. All right, Brian, thank you so much for coming on the show. You've dropped so many knowledge bombs and we've got three rapid fire questions that we ask everyone at the end of the show. So just quick answers, rapid fire before we sign off and tell everybody where to find you. So first one is what advice would you give 20 year old Brian? 20 year old Brian, I would say, Go find the number one person in your market that is absolutely crushing it. That's where you want to be. And I would go work for that person for free. So if I was telling 20 year old Brian, I'd say, get really crystal clear about who you want to become and what you want. Find that person, do whatever it takes to work for them for free. Great advice. And second question, what advice do you have for a new investor looking to get started in short term rentals or hotels today? I would say don't limit yourself. The biggest advice and the biggest realization that I've had is everything is on the other side of about two to three years of hard work and education. So no offense, but if I could go back like, and learn about larger strategies and learn about those in the very beginning, like if you see people that are starting a multifamily and then they learn about multifamily from the very beginning, like they, the idea of buying 100 units for them is like nothing. So if I was brand new, I would go ahead and be establishing again, what do I want? And I would be really, really intentional with the strategy that I pick because you don't have to do the stack method like Bigger Pockets talked about, where it's one unit, then four units, then eight units and 16. You can just learn how to do all of those. It just takes a few years. It's the same amount of time. So I would get, again, it all goes back to mentors. Also great advice. And last question, what's your favorite book that's impacted your mindset? Ooh, that is hard because there's so many different ones. For me and for this show, I will say Unreasonable mm -hmm. Hospitality by Will Guidera. Love that one. It is such a good one. I'm obsessed with him. I want him on my show so badly. Um, <laughs> that is the, the the quote that I'll say is service and black service is black and white, hospitality is color. I am obsessed with that. So service is being doing what's expected of you, and then hospitality is everything else. So I think that is such a wonderful book for anyone that's doing short-term rentals, hospitality, or any business. Totally, totally agree. That is such a great one. And last, Brian, for all of our listeners who want to follow you, find out more about you, where can they do that? If they've made it through this, uh, you will like hearing me in a podcast, Mike, every single day. It's the Action Academy podcast. Uh, you can check that out wherever podcast uh, platforms you listen to, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, you can also look me up on Instagram, just at Brian Lubin. It's my name everywhere. <laughs> All right. Well, Brian, thank you so much for coming on the show. And maybe we'll do another one on uh, specifically hotels. We'd love to have you back again soon. Perfect. Thank you so much, Avery.